Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Patrick Foley. I'm a uh, freelance 3D artist or generalist, uh, primarily in the ad or motion graphics industry. Uh, and uh, a lot of times for fun, I'll be posting uh, abstract renders uh, or really any kind of render on my Instagram and other kinds of social medias. And ones that do primarily well are ones that I render with Octane like this. And uh, as you can see, it's like a rainbow floating into a pot of gold with a bunch of gold drops falling from the sky. Uh, and it did pretty well, looks pretty cool. Um, and it looks pretty photorealistic. And uh, I think that's what we're gonna make today. So uh, yeah, let's get started. I think we're gonna do everything from the modeling, lighting, texturing, everything. So I'm just gonna make it from scratch and I think that I'll show you the guys, that I'll show you guys the process a little bit uh, easier um, making this from scratch. So I think we can get started. So we have a blank template here in uh, Cinema 4D. And uh, I think the first thing I wanna do is go ahead and set a camera. So I'm gonna click a camera here. And uh, although we will be using Octane, I don't think we have to worry too much about um, the Octane settings quite yet. We just have to make a default camera. And let's zero everything out. Boom, boom, boom. And zero out the rotation as well. So we should have a camera just like totally facing forward. Uh, but with the Z, let's actually take that back a thousand uh, centimeters. And now if we hop in, we'll, we'll kind of have like a decent, you know, platform plane looking here. Uh, and the first thing we're going to want to do is uh, just lock this thing in place for now. So let's go to right click the camera, Cinema 4D tags, and let's go protection. And that right there is going to lock this in place. Sometimes I accidentally move the camera when I'm in it and uh, that's always frustrating. So let's uh, lock that thing in place. We can hop out of that for now. Um, everything looks fine. Um, I believe my aspect ratio is a square. Um, yours doesn't have to be, that was just the default. But I believe if we wanna change those parameters as well now we can. So we can go to uh, output, let's go 1080 by 1350. Um, or if you want to make it a little bit nice, let's go 1200 by 1500. And if you like the ratio, it should stay. So this is usually my default for, uh, those kind of longer photos on Instagram that give you the biggest bang for your buck as far as real estate on the screen. And, uh, so now you can see these things, the aspect ratio is a little bit more narrow, which is what we're going for. So looking good. Uh, the first thing we want to do is I guess make this uh, little pot. And because this render, if you can see here, the pot, I mean, you can almost not even see it because of, you know, one, the lighting and two, because of how many coins are just falling from the sky. And uh, there are a lot of context clues here, uh, like the rainbow um, and just all these coins flowing from the inside here. So uh, I think there's enough. We don't have to spend too much time by any means on some crazy pot or the textures or anything like that. We just need some kind of thing that will give the viewer an idea that this is, yes, a pot of gold that, uh, you know. So we got a lot of context cues that, clues there, and uh, I think we're ready to start. So uh, let's let's make this little pot here. Let's go, uh, I'm trying to think of the best way. Um, honestly, we can start with, uh, let's see. I think we can loft this. So let's go, uh, let's go and create a circle, circle spline here. And as we can see, we need this thing to be placing flat. So let's go to object. Let's go to plane uh, X Z. So that'll give us kind of this uh, kind of flatter circle. Of course, it looks like a line because we're so zeroed out in the camera, but it really looks like this from the top view. And again, if you just click your middle mouse button, you'll be able to get these four views. Um, I think we're looking good. So let's uh, click E on the keyboard and just move this guy down a little bit. It's kind of nice. Um, and then uh, I think we're just gonna wanna go and grab a, oops, grab a loft. So let's click the loft and then drag the circle inside the loft. As you can see, it's filled in now. And from here, we're just going to uh, kind of manipulate this first guy. Let's click E again. By the way, E is to move these guys around. T is to scale them. So, and R of course is rotation. Um, so with the first one kind of set in stone, let's, uh, Let's go with the, um, let's just duplicate this circle here. And while holding down control, let's drag. And then uh, T again, holding down control, click and drag. 
and then E, control and drag. Nice. Now let's uh, scale this one a little bit up. Let's click E again and just control drag to create some nice T to scale down. Now we're getting a little bit more of a pot. I know, uh, at least for me, it always takes a while to get some shape I'm happy with. Uh, and so that's another reason why I kind of wanted to do this from scratch. So you guys can see the process a little bit more. And of course, uh, with the top, uh, we don't need that to be a hard surface. So let's go to caps and none. So we can have a cap on this side, but we don't. And let's change the type to end guns. Got some nice clean geometry there. I'm not totally happy with this, but um, let's go T. All right, so now, um, so the keyboard I was using actually just uh, turned off on me. So let's just make sure this uh, kind of pot looking thing is uh, doing what we want it to do. So let's go back to this view. And as long as it looks good on this view, that's, that's really what we need to worry about. Um, so yeah. And when I say this doesn't have to be uh, anything perfect, I, I truly mean that. Um, this is honestly as good as we probably need it um, for now. Um, so we can call this pot. Oops. Pot. And then, uh, yeah, if we want to give this a little bit of thickness, that's totally fine. Let's go take this pot hop this into a cloth surface. And then within the cloth surface, we don't need any subdivisions. Uh, but let's bump out the thickness a little bit. So let's give it a little bit of inner thickness. And we should be good. Um, and if you want to get a little bit more, uh, you know, detail, let's just add a torus. Again, we don't have to make sure we're modeling this thing by the books at all because it's such a small element it really doesn't matter that much so let's drag this thing over here cool so it looks good and now we just have to worry about uh that should actually be good for the pot um let's just combine all these into a null um <clears throat> alt g that pot so this is our makeshift pot thing here trust me when this thing is so low in the frame you won't be able to see hardly anything and that's why we don't have to worry too much about conflicting geometry or anything looking too weird and we can shape this up a tiny bit um but yeah that's looking good so far we can scale this down to how we need it and scale this whole thing down remember it was pretty far in the frame last time so we don't have to make we, we can make this thing pretty damn small and uh, that should be good let's create a plane just so we kind of know the perspective of what everything's doing here um, let's make sure the ground is touching this guy <clears throat> we can just scale this up and uh, before we move on let's actually remove this uh, protection tag or rather just move it anywhere else so we can manipulate the camera real quick um, let's change the focal length to portrait and uh, scale back a little bit. And uh, let's take this guy down and a little bit up because we want this thing to be kind of small in the frame. Boom. And if you hold down Alt, it'll go by the, uh, the tenth, I believe. And uh, that should be good. So what I was doing there is I was changing the camera because uh, I was changing the focal length because if you have a wider camera, everything's going to stretch a little bit more versus a uh, something like a longer lens, like an 80 millimeter <clears throat> or a portrait. Everything's going to look kind of like set in stone and really hold its own weight there. And it's going to look more prominent uh, as well as depth of field. That's going to help us later. So a, a uh, longer lens means a shallower depth of field. So uh, that should be good. And uh, we're looking good here. So let's drag this protection tag back on the camera and make sure we can't move anymore. And that is looking good.
So next thing we're gonna wanna do is make sure we have our rainbow. And the rainbow, very obvious, um, a nice, nice curve here. So what we can do is we can take a, uh, we can start with an arc. And we can increase this guy and pretty much you can see the arc is almost already giving us our shape that we're looking for. Uh, if we drag this guy over here, move it down a little bit. That should be falling directly inside and that's good. Um, the next thing we want to do is apply some geometry to it because right now a spline not only is not the right shape that we're looking for, but it is a, uh, there's no geometry. Uh, so what we're going to do is grab a plane, simple plane, and uh, we're going to hop this guy on the Z just so we can see it, see all the segments. And then what we're going to do is grab a spline wrap. And within the spline, we're going to drag that on top of or as a child of the plane and then grab the arc as the spline. As you can see, this looks like some kind of weird funnel thing, but that's only because the orientation or the axis is wrong. So let's just flip that until we're on Y positive. <clears throat> and so we're going to take the plane and just let's go T and scale this whole thing down. Looks good. And as you can see, the geometry is totally not fitting to this. So we can pretty much take out all the width segments and just increase the uh, height segments on maybe 100. And so right there, that looks good. So it all just depends on how smooth you want this thing to be. Um, as well as this uh, the spline itself. So if you go to uniform, it'll make it less uh, jagged if you add some nice segments. Let's go to like maybe 48. Something like that. And that looks good. So uh, the next thing we'll want to do is uh, start making some coins here. And that's where the, uh, the fun kind of happens. And so um, we got the pot. We got the uh, the rainbow. Call this rainbow. Cool. And uh, I guess we can group these in as a null. Rainbow. And again, just Alt G to uh, put these guys in a folder of some sort. And uh, the plane here can be floor. So it's good to uh, title your assets, stay organized. Um, and then we can create a coin. Really easy cylinder. Um, let's zoom in here. This will kind of give us a sense of scale as well. So let's go uh, Z positive <clears throat> or what have you and just uh, decrease this, uh, the height of the coins. Obviously, this thing is too thick and too big, so let's just scale this whole thing down. Something like that seems to be fitting. So I still think we're a little bit thick here, so we can narrow that down. Take the cylinder. Let's go to caps, fill it. And I think something like 0.5, maybe 0.3 would work. Let's be in the middle, 0.4 because you want light to kind of shine off these things. And the more I think about it, let's go 0.5 because uh, the bigger the bevel, the more we'll be able to see the light hitting off of it, uh, like the highlights. So that to me looks good. And because these will be so small, we don't have to worry about a ton of geometry. So that should already be good. And uh, we are looking good. So um, what we can do is take the cylinder or coin and hop this thing into a cloner. So let's go to MoGraph, cloner, drop this thing into the cloner like this. And of course, by default, it's gonna go into linear mode. Um, however, we just need this thing to be in grid array. And uh, the first, uh, first thing we're gonna be doing here is we're going to be mapping this onto uh, some kind of object here so it looks like they're exploding. Um, like we want this thing to look full. So, um, one of the things I suggest is just going to a sphere, creating a sphere and making type hemisphere. So we don't have to waste geometry, um, increase segments, maybe to about 42. Uh, and just for now, making this editable, dragging this down a little bit, making that a little bit smaller. So essentially we're trying to make this makeshift uh, filled pot, pot effect. 
So something like that <clears throat> looks about right. And we have the coins, so we can really just go to mode object. Um, let's go to render instance. And then we can go to uh, sphere and just map the sphere onto the thing here. And uh, if we increase this to something like 200, maybe 400, we can see once this starts rendering, we'll be able to see a lot of coins here. And obviously these things are mapped completely identically, so it's not going to look too appealing right now. So what we can do is go to cloner, MoGraph, effector, and random. And this is already going to give us a nice effect, like they're bursting out of this thing. So what we can do is take the time to 20, 20, 20. Um, scale can be the same because they're coins. They should be technically the same. So let's change the rotation of a lot of these guys. And then uh, just so we don't have any intersecting, this is another problem people run to a lot. Um, while we have the cloner selected, again, let's take the MoGraph. Let's go to push part. Change the iterations to 100. And take the radius down to zero. And every time you click this thing, these things will try to uh, break apart from each other and not intersect. So something like this should be good. Yeah, that's looking good. Um, the only thing you want to make sure you watch out for is these things running into the uh, the walls here. Um, and that can be fixed um, by a few different ways. You can just go to cloner. I'm going to try making a plane effector. Um, and already we can see this thing kind of hop up because I think by default it takes the Ys and just pushes them out. So you can you mess with things like that. That looks kind of cool. Um, or what you can do is go to something like scale, uniform, minus one. So essentially they all have a minus one scale or they're kind of deleted by now. Um, and then you can take the, uh, let's go, where is it? Uh, we're going to mess with the fall off. So let's take a fall off here and let's go to something that resembles the shape we're trying to, you know, get rid of. So maybe a torus. So torus something like this where we can kind of uh, diminish the shapes coming from this kind of region. So if you can see before, after. And you can make the fall off almost zero so we don't get any of those middle ground ones. So we can see we pretty much have all the power in the world to just delete the ones we don't want to see. And that to me looks good. So those things are popping out of there um, and that should be good for like this whole part. Uh, the next thing we we'll want to do is kind of create these dynamic ones. Um, so we can kind of create this coin. Let's duplicate it. Command C, Command V. So now we have this cloner. Let's uh, take all of these uh, effectors and delete them. And let's make this cloner. Instead of object mode, let's go to grid array. Remember, we're still in uh, render instance. And um, yeah, so that should be good. And uh, we're going to drag these kind of more up here so we can see what's going on 100%. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to really kind of spice this thing up. Let's go 7 by 7 by something like 7. Let's start with that. Um, and we're going to kind of try to make this thing look as populated as possible. Um, and we're going to add another uh, MoGraph effector. Let's go random. So now we're starting to get these randomized coins, which is looking good. Let's go to rotation. And randomize all these coins. And uh, yeah, so let's take the random effector and uh, change the Y a little bit more so those get uh, a little bit more evened out. And I think I went crazy with this one. This one was, uh, there were a ton and including hitting the ground as well. So the first way I'm going to show you is uh, a still image that kind of doesn't even appear to be, um, you know, if you were just worried about the having these things in the air, this would suffice. So this would be good enough. But what this won't give you is the motion blur effect and it won't give you the dynamic simulation of them hitting the ground. So what we're going to do 
is uh, remove the random effector and uh, we're going to actually remake, uh, let's actually reapply that random effector. Uh, all we have to do is take the rotation out and uh, I think this should be good because we want to start with the rotation that's a little bit randomized or a position that's a little bit randomized. Um, and let's see what happens when we take all these up and uh, we right click on the coin object here and let's go simulation rigid body. Now when we play, they all fall. Now that's great, but they're not interacting with anything. Um, so we have to make this plane a, uh, a dynamic object. So let's right click the plane, let's go new tag, let's go simulation tags, and let's go collider body. So with the collider body, um, you're gonna wanna make sure this shape is set to mode dynamics. And then when we play, we're gonna get a nice looking fall. So essentially we'll be able to potentially uh, freeze frame this and this will look really nice with the, uh, with the simulation. So um, what we we'll wanna do is we wanna make sure there's a pretty good amount of these things and we can see that there for the most part are, we're, we're going to kind of widen these out a little bit to the point where we can pause this thing and it just looks like these things are really, you know, kind of endless. So essentially I think we want these things to be, f I think we want way more of these actually. So let's go to per step and just keep increasing the Y. And then when we play, Something like this. So this looks kind of funky now, but um, when we pause this, all these things are gonna be like caught in the motion blur. Um, and uh, instead of these guys looking all kind of wonky, I guess, or not wonky, just so similar before they hit the ground, I actually do suggest that we take the randomizer and randomize them from the start. So now, yeah, this is looking good. So this is essentially what I had uh, from the beginning. So if you wanted to take the camera and uh, maybe just uh, move the uh, protection tag a little bit for a second. And let's make sure we get all of these coins dropping down. We don't have any room for any uh, anything else. So this is looking good. This is actually looking like a perfect uh, simulation so far. Everything's interacting together. And we have coins falling from everywhere. Essentially, we're looking pretty good. Um, and, uh, yeah, the only way I can show you the motion blur is by actually rendering this thing. So we'll be taking that down, uh, pretty quickly in a second here. So, um, what we're going to do is, uh, bring out an octane live view window. So let's go, uh, drag this guy here. And, uh, as you can see, our aspect ratio very faintly. Um, by the way, if you click Shift V, and you go View, take that all the way 100%, we can see the bounding box is much easier. So let's see what happens when we render this thing. Very nice. Let's click the uh, lock resolution button and just zoom out so we can see everything that's happening here. Um, now this this looks great. Um, let's do a few things before we start lighting and texturing this thing. Let's go to Octane Settings. Now let's go from direct lighting to path tracing. Now we can see a lot of these sh unneeded shadows are disappearing. So let's go to max sample, something like 200 GI clamps, set that to one. And that should be good for now. Now the, uh, the next thing we want to do is, of course, getting our lighting right. And so uh, before I want to texture everything, I want to I want to I want to kind of light things to make sure I like the way it looks, so I know that the textures will be uh, perceived correctly based on the lighting. So um, that's usually how I do it. And uh, what we can do for that, let's go to Objects HDR Environment, and that's going to kill everything because now we are relying on adding our own lights, which is totally fine. Now, if you notice on this picture, I had a pretty harsh key light coming from the left. That, actually, that's the only kind of light you can see coming from this thing. Um, so we're going to do the same thing. So we're going to take an object light, area light. Um, you can see it's working already. And increasing the Y value. Let's uh, rotate this thing 90 degrees. And hop out of our uh, camera. 
Uh, I'm sorry, before we even touch the camera, let's bring that back there. And uh, let's go to our front view. And sometimes I think it's easier to move my lights, especially if they're rotated 100 or 90 degrees this way. And this looks good. Um, notice how fast, although this isn't too crazy of a scene, notice how fast the uh, 2080 Ti's are rendering this image. It's almost instantaneous. Um, and that's that's such a must when you're uh, you know trying to test lighting, test materials, textures. I remember when I was using just the physical render from Cinema 4D and I was just bound to my processor. Um, it was a nightmare. I mean, I actually got used to it, but uh, you know, I'd be waiting sometimes five minutes before even seeing what the frame looked like. And then I have to make a change and then do the same thing over and over. Next thing I want to do is take a look at these harsh highlights. Now this is due because my uh, light, I haven't changed the intensity at all, but also because we are not working with a great bit of latitude here in the default camera. So if we're going to right click the camera, let's go to Cinema 4D Octane Tags. And we're going to go to uh, Octane Camera Tag. And with that, we're going to enable the camera imager. And uh, from there, making sure that uh, your check camera is on, um, you're going to want to make sure this highlight compression is set to one. And as you can see, we got all of that information back. So I'm not even sure we have to um, change the, the light intensity after all. Um, so the next thing you'll want to do, let's start texturing the, uh, the pot, making sure everything looks good. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to materials and we're going to go to octane. Let's go metallic. Um, and we're going to texture this pot. That looks great. Um, we can see exactly where the highlights come from. <coughs> Apologies. And uh, what we're going to do is take this uh, octane material and uh, we're going to go and make the specular a little bit darker. And then we're going to take our roughness and rough it up a little bit. And so that's going to give us a very basic generic looking pot. Um, totally fine if that's where you want to stop. Um, we could do uh, a couple other things by just going to the node editor and uh, let's just take a generic uh, noise node and drag that into the bump. As we can see, we're getting some wear and tear there, which is nice. Let's go to projection and UV transform. And if we go to mesh, let's go to box. Now we can see this thing is looking a little bit nicer. Um, and if we zoom in, you can really get those details in. Um, now it just comes down to whether you want to decrease the noise a little bit, make it a little bit more fine. Um, that looks fine to me. Um, if you want to keep it there, you can. Um, feel free to unlock the ratio and uh, kind of mess with the uh, the stretching of this noise as well. Sometimes that's fun to do. Um, but yeah, this looks good to me. Let's lock that back up. And uh, I think we should be good. So uh, the next thing we we'll want to do is, uh, so that's our basic looking uh, kind of rough metallic pot texture. Uh, next thing we we'll want to do is kind of make the coins. So the coins very easy. You're going to just going to go to materials. You're going to go to octane metallic material. And uh, you're going to drag this thing onto the coin. Uh, now we have two sets of coins. We can do these ones first. That's fine. And uh, under the octane material, let's go. We're really just going to want to change the specular. So let's make sure this is all the way up. And these guys are set to something like a gold. That looks good. Now, I don't think these need to be 100% glossy. So we can uh, take the roughness up just a little bit. Yeah, something like that. So we're, we are getting some shines, but we're also able to see the forms of everything. That looks good. We can just apply these to the second coins. And now we have our coins. Last but not least, we have our rainbow. Um, so the rainbow, we want to make sure uh, that this thing is giving off e a light. So we want to make sure our texture, one of the only textures besides, I believe, 
uh, universal material is octane diffuse material, and that will allow us to emit something from the uh, the geometry. So if we go to, let's see, let's go rainbow, drag that on there. And um, let's take the diffuse and just turn it off and take the emission and go to, um, actually let's open the node editor. So let's open this guy up and we'll do everything from here. So what we're gonna do is go to emission and go to texture emission. Now you can see that uh, this is being applied correctly because uh, we have something there. Um, and what I'm gonna do is go and grab a image texture And uh, I have an image texture of a rainbow. Um, and you can get this anywhere. You can make it on Photoshop super easily. You can do whatever you want. Um, but I had that and it was, uh, this is very, um, very useful for this one. So what we're gonna do is drag this onto the texture. And we can see perfectly it is already mapped. So I don't have to, you know, mess with anything on my end currently. Um, but that looks great. So we have this rainbow dropping into the pot, and that is great. Um, last thing, one of the last things we have to worry about before we get into the post-processing settings is the um, the floor. Uh, and this floor, it's kind of this like kind of rough metallic texture that's giving this nice, uh, you know, reflections to the coins. And uh, for that, I believe all we need is a material, a metallic material. And we can drag that onto the floor. Now, right now, this is a little bit disorienting because it looks like it's on either water or just a mirror, and we don't necessarily want that. What we can do is take the roughness and crank that up a little bit. Now you can see we're getting that uh, look that we got before. And this will be a good time to actually make changes to the... Uh, the, the previous image that I made. So um, I think it could use a key light here or some kind of rim light actually. Um, so what we can do is just take the pot and just go, uh, where is it? Object, light, area light. And let's rotate this one 90 degrees this way. Now we can see we can get a nice little light quality there. And uh, if we take option, uncheck camera, now we can hop out of our camera and move this light how we want. I don't think we need this light to be this wide. Um, and notice how this light is showing up here. We don't need that to be a thing. So we just click this here, take the opacity down to zero and it kind of disappears. Let's make that light a little less wide, move it back. Back a little bit more. And I believe if we uncheck visible on specular, okay, so that's gonna erase it from this guy too. So uh, what we'll wanna do is I guess drag this guy up a little bit so it's out of the frame, but still giving us a nice little light there. So that looks good to me um, and we should be good. Now this is a good time to kind of look at this image and see what else we would need. Um, so far, we don't have any of the motion blur effects, so let's get that going. So uh, what we we'll want to do is enable motion blur. So if we go to camera, the octane camera settings, let's go to um, motion blur and enable. And notice nothing happens. Let's uh, check camera here to make sure all of these settings apply. And if we just take the shutter and increase it, Nothing might happen because we have to we might have to reload the simulation. But if we take this shutter to something kind of crazy, just so we can see if it's working, let's go back and pl play the simulation. And you can see we getting it yet? I'm not sure. We might have to reload the. Uh, oh. My apologies, that is why we're doing it. Okay, 
So, and this is a good reason why I am uh, making this with you guys and not just having these things built out. Um, so you can kind of find your mistakes and go from them. Now, any object that is going to be using the uh, motion blur must have a tag on it. So if we take the cloner, um, both cloners eventually, but we'll take this cloner and go Cinema 40 Octane tags, Octane object tag. Um, as you can see already, that is making everything crazy. So let's go to uh, motion blur and go to transform and vertex. Now we're just gonna take that. And uh, those are the, that's actually the only one we'll need it because this one was not dynamics. This one was just a cloner. So if we want to replay this, oops, render failure. If you want to replay this, and stop at a time you think would be good. This is way too much going on. So we're just gonna wanna take our Octane camera tag, motion blur, and just drag this back to a point where you think it looks pretty decently motion blurry. Um, I would say something kind of like that. So let's re-render that and see how it looks. So we are getting a little bit of motion blur. Maybe a little bit more would be nice. Um, and there, and there we're kind of getting it. So we're, we're starting to see all these things flying down. And, uh, I think this is looking good. So, um, we're getting this motion blur effect that we wanted. Let's replay that. And it looks like we got a lot of things flying. Um, so that's looking good. Um, we can take our render, uh, settings and bump this up to maybe 400 to see a little bit more detail on that motion blur. Looking good. <clears throat> and this would be a good time to also test the uh, camera imager spectral AI denoiser. So if we can uh, enable that and click right here. Now when it stops, you'll be able to see it. So you can see it has done a good job of uh, really blurring out all the noise that happens from the uh, the motion blur. Um, so I'm not going to have that checked down for now, but it's good to know. We're almost done here. As you can see, we got the motion blur. We have the coins built out. We've modded, modeled and lit almost everything. Um, now we just have to worry about some post settings and finalizing this whole image and rendering it out. So looking good here, but I could use some work. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is uh, start working with the post processing. So making sure in the option tab, making sure that the camera, the check camera is on. Um, you're gonna enable the uh, this guy here and you can see real faintly that uh, lighting by the rainbow is popping out. And that's good for a couple of reasons. One, because uh, we can see a change and two, we, can, uh, we know that the rainbow is in fact giving off some luminosity. So let's take the bloom power up. Looking nice. And let's taking the uh, let's take the glare power up a little bit. And this is how we get this kind of like glowy looking glares, and especially with the coins, we'll want some of that. But uh, the newest version of Octane, they added a cutoff feature, which is really nice because we can cut off some unneeded. Um, you can kind of, it's like a threshold button, if anything. It's like taking certain parts that don't necessarily need a ton of glow and just deleting them from the mix. So I do like that. So the glare amount, we can take that down to two. We can gl blur the glare a little bit um, at a spectral intensity that gives it like that film burny look, film burny look by the light edges. So we can take that and uh, that should be good. And uh, the bloom power, we can take that down maybe a tiny bit. Um, ideally, we want this thing to be realistic. So instead of taking the bloom power and the glare power all the way up, so we have this crazy image, we want the light to do most of that. Um, so to do that, we didn't really edit the uh, the light settings. So if we have the, what do you call it? If we have the, um, where are we talking about? Sorry, if we have the uh, note editor out, sorry, then we have we should have no problem in just increasing this light. So uh, what we're gonna do is take the power and just increase that. 
and that should be good. Um, and we still don't need that much bloom uh, or glare for that matter. Maybe a little bit more bloom than, gl than the glare, but that's looking good. So uh, I think that should be good. And uh, right there, we have a nice image. So let's re-render that and we're looking good. Now uh, we have this great image, but we I think we need to add some uh, mess with the gamma and the exposure. So since we're on sRGB, this gives us, especially with the highlight compression on, this gives us a generally flat looking image, which is not typically what we want. Um, of course, this is, uh, it looks fine, but instead of applying just like a custom LUT, we can kind of manipulate this a little bit further, um, especially if you aren't taking it into Photoshop or another program to light or uh, to color this a bit further. So we can take the gamma down a little bit and the exposure up. So to me, I kind of like these images looking crispy um, and that kind of does it for me there. Um, and because this should be a colorful image, you should have no problem in taking the saturation and just kind of bumping up a little bit. I know the uh, the rainbow colors would actually probably be affected here. Um, but I think you can offset that a little bit by just taking the node editor within the light and taking a, where is it, color correction node and putting it in between these two guys here. And just taking the saturation down a little bit. There we go. So we can kind of offset that a little bit. Um, but if you did want this thing to be super uh, potent with color, by all means, that is your call. Um, so even this kind of look is very pretty cool. It almost looks like a retro looking, like the rainbow's fading out, but it's still giving that glow and it still has all of those uh, kind of features that we need. Um, so the, for the render settings, we're looking here um, kind of around 1200 by 1500 pixels. That's essentially what I would consider a pretty good uh, resolution for Instagram, which is where I post all my work. Um, and that should be good when we have the octane settings. We got 400 samples. I would usually set this to like 1200 um, and let that render. And uh, But that's pretty much good. So if we render this, let's see what happens. So we got the dynamics, we have the uh, the bouncing, we have the motion blur. This is, um, you know, essentially everything that we needed in this image. The only thing you could change, I guess, that I'm looking at is the amount of coins, which you are free to manipulate pretty much at any time. And uh, I think that should be good. That is looking uh, pretty good. It's already done rendering. You can see it's taking 26 seconds for two 2080 TIs to bump out this image. Of course, not the craziest image, but uh, still pretty impressive. And uh, I think uh, I think that's looking pretty good. So um, that's that's essentially it. So uh, yeah, I appreciate you guys tuning into this video. Um, we've talked about essentially everything from modeling, lighting, texturing, and uh, making this pot of gold from scratch. And I know I wanted to do that with you guys, uh, kind of in person. Um, and not kind of have all these fine tune settings already figured out. I wanted to remake this thing. It's been a while. So, uh, you can kind of see the thought process that I've had throughout all these three videos. And, uh, I think essentially it turned out pretty well. So, um, keep in my, keep in touch for the, uh, the next few videos that'll be popped out in the, uh, NVIDIA, um, YouTube and, uh, yeah, subscribe. It's been great. Thank you guys so much again. My name is Patrick Foley and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.